Because, see, knowledge is a key to your survival. Whether people want to believe that or not, I know there's a lot of people out here, you don't like watching the news, you don't like listening to any of that kind of stuff and all that. And I understand to a point. The point is, when it starts to affect your family because your failure in the ability to process the information, to put it into perspective, to come up with a plan to make sure that you and your family are secure in a time of need, in an emergency situation, I have a problem with that. I call that a fool. And the person that's paying the price is your family. This video today, bring more awareness to what is taking place and what is coming. There's a lot of people out there have misconceptions of a lot of things that are taking place right now in this country, obviously in this world. I don't think this is any more of a, uh, just a country by country type situation. We're in a global crisis as we speak right now. There is a lot of stuff that is going on, which some of the stuff we are all aware of. There's a lot of stuff that's going on that some of the stuff we may not be aware of. And that's why I keep bringing these videos. I want people to be aware. I want people to be able to be prepared. I want people to have the knowledge and the ammo that they need to tackle and what we know is coming. We have a lot of unknowns. We do have quite a few knowns that are going to be happening and taking place. I've been stating all along, we're in a recession now. Uh, the government fails to come out and say that because it's an election year, because you need to be telling the people the truth in which we do not get told the truth anymore. We haven't been told the truth in years. But there comes a point one has to really question of when the safety and the integrity of this country is put more up front and in the limelight than the actual truth and telling people what they need to be doing and how they need to be doing it and why they need to be doing it. So it would be beneficial to the government if they really did care that they would put out warnings or awareness pieces so that people could prepare for themselves. It's like preparing for battle. Trying to plan for what is coming is like getting ready. So when the battle approaches us or when the battle arrives, a lot of people out here will be prepared. But we don't do it that way. Here's how devastating this winter could actually be. A lot of industry leaders, just so you all are aware, in the grocery industry, all right, your grocery bills are getting ready to shoot up like you haven't believed. You think going to the store right now and paying five bucks for a pound of butter and five dollars for a gallon of milk and four dollars for a loaf of bread is bad? Five to seven dollars for a dozen eggs or an 18 pack in eggs or whatever it is. You think that's bad now? You haven't seen nothing yet, folks. All right. They're talking, this is really going to hit your pocketbook come this coming winter. All right. And they're looking at and predicting these prices. And the prices are rising as we're speaking. Every time you go to the store every week, the prices on stuff have gone up. You know, they're talking between 50 to 70% hikes from where we are right now in just our food. Just our food. All right. This is no longer a, a, um, a threat. This is no longer a threat on any type of uh, a stage here. All right. This is reality, folks. And people need to wake up and smell the roses because this is going to get really nasty really quick. I think once the elections are over and it's going to get ugly because right now they're trying to keep everything in check. They don't want nothing out in the news. It's going to, you know, make one group look worse than the other group and none, none of this kind of other crap. You know what I'm saying? It's politics. This is what they do every time there's an election. But once it is over, watch out, folks.
Katie bar the doors. One out of five Americans are already reporting that they're in an extreme food crisis situation because of the high prices. They can't afford it. And farmers aren't happy about this either. You know, I saw something the other day where uh, a group of people were trying to blame uh, farmers and stuff because of the lack of the uh, turnout this year and the harvest and all this kind of stuff. Are you people nuts? Really? You think the farmers are going to be out here and then they, they don't want to supply what they've been doing for hundreds of years on their farmland throughout the generations of their families? Give me a break, folks. I don't buy it. All right. I grew up in a farming community. I know how these people are, how they, they work. They go out there, they bust their rear ends to go out there and make sure that everything is done. They're up at the crack of dawn and they're out there. Well, nowadays they're out there until whenever. But here's the problem. This year, we knew this was going to happen. We've been reporting this. I've been reporting this. A lot of channels have been reporting this. We had the lack of fertilizer. We still had the major drought that was going on. With the lack of water, the lack of fertilizer, how do you think that these guys are going to turn out these astronomical yields that, you know, this country was looking for? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen next year either because we're going to be in the same boat. This is like Groundhog Day every single day. You guys ever seen that movie, Groundhog Day? Yeah. Okay. It was a great movie, but this is what it's really like in real life. So now the United States is trying to figure out how they can make up some of the difference of the lost food products when we had a lower than average yield this year because of the lack of water, the drought, and the lack of fertilizer to put on the uh, crops and stuff. So, you know, they're trying to play the devil's, devil's advocate here and trying to make sure that, you know, they can try to look good and try to feed all these people of the world, which it's not going to happen because you're going to either deplete us down trying to do this. You see, it, it's all it's a global crisis. That's what I said in the very beginning here, folks. This is all a very big global crisis. It's not one country. We're all in this boat together. And for some reason, there's a lot of holes in this boat. And, you know, this one doesn't want to pass the hole and this one doesn't want to pass a hole, but this one's making more damn holes. And, you know, we're constantly bailing water out of this boat and we're not really getting anywhere here. Does that make sense to everybody? There's a lot of the top industrial leaders and CEOs. If you guys actually get on a computer, you can do all your own homework and find a lot of things out. And they're from all different chains. They're all from different stores or different markets and everything else. These people are even saying, and they're telling the public, they need to get out and they need to buy up and stock up on supplies while they still can, because conditions are only going to get more complicated and more um, devastating as we go into this coming winter into next year. And that's not even including what has already been said from our government, top energy officials and everything else on the prices that's going to cost you to heat your home this year with whichever energy you are using. It's supposed to be astronomical, folks. The prices are already rising. And just the food sector of the whole inflation, all right, which is somewhere between like 12 and 18% when you look at food, just food, nothing else, just food, all right? Now, what they're talking about is you're going to go to the store coming soon to a town near you, and those eggs that you're paying maybe five to eight bucks for a dozen or an 18 pack or whatever they may be, all right, they're going to cost you another 40%. Your chicken and meat is going to cost you another 25% above what it is right now. Flour, if you want to make your own breads, pies, uh, cakes, or whatever, rolls, this is going to cost you an extra 25%. Every part of the food pyramid is going up in price. We have to really start preparing 
now. If you haven't started preparing now, you're running on limited time because old man winter is knocking on the door right now. And let's talk about energy now. Energy coming into this winter. All right. Depending on which type of energy you use to heat your home. Is going to be going up anywhere from 10 to 30 percent over last year's price, whatever it cost you last year. So if it costs you 10 grand, you're either going to pay 10 percent more or up to 30 percent more. Electricity is going to be your cheapest form of energy this winter. Propane is next. Natural gas, fuel. While we're talking about fuel, our government last week did announce that we only had 25 days left of diesel fuel and fuel, which also includes the fuel oil that you do use to heat your homes. Just to give you an idea, in the Northeast is the highest usage of fuel, the Northeast of this United States. 80% of the people that live in the Northeast heat their homes with fuel oil. And that's close to 57 million people. And what are they going to do if we run out of fuel? Nobody in the government anywhere is going to be telling you right now that you need to be getting prepared. For some reason, all these big businessmen, the CEOs, these industry leaders and everything else have been putting these warnings out, but the government just kind of hushes it. It's like a smoking fire and it is through a big wet blanket right over the top of it because they don't want it to come out. It's election time. We can't have that come out now. That'll look bad for us. You see what I'm saying, folks? We have to stick together. And that's one of the reasons why this channel is existing is because I find it very important to bring any type of news that I can to make you aware, to make you prepared, and to make you understand the importance of whatever it is that you have to do to prepare your family, period. That's what this is all about.